Hello everybody, this video is sponsored by Lumix and the plan for this video was to do a quick test of my new lenses, my 25 mil that I spoke about in my video last week, the 15 mil that I also spoke about which is recording this video and a uh, another lens, a 42 and a half mil that turned up this week. I think I've got enough lenses for now, for a little while, maybe. Uh, but yeah, the plan didn't go to plan because it rained all week. So I've I've hardly been out. I've I've just been sat at my desk. But there was one dry afternoon, and I decided to go and stretch my legs and try and come up with some ideas on that afternoon. Um, the ideas weren't great. Idea for Broadway or the West End, uh, Narcos, the musical, and nor was the photography. To be honest, it was it was slim pickings. I got a couple of selfies. Aside from that there was nothing. So I decided instead of trying to chase photos to test my new lenses that I would use one of my new lenses to demonstrate one of my favorite photography techniques or tricks when shooting scenes that are really ultra wide or require really wide focal lengths. So here is a photo which is to be honest a little bit boring but it's perfect for demonstrating this point that I want to make here. So this photo that you're seeing was shot with a 8 to 18 mil ultra wide lens and I shot it at 8 mil so 16 millimeters full frame equivalent so really really wide uh, and then from exactly the same position with all the same camera settings I shot the exact same scene with my 25 mil lens and uh, obviously to get the same field of view I had to stitch lots of images together with this lens so probably nine or ten images maybe I would guess I haven't checked but I'd guess it was it was something like that uh, and there are a number of reasons you may choose to do that versus just using the lens that you're supposed to use for that focal length and uh, in this video I'm going to explain why you might want to do that and also how you go about doing it yeah, so all's not lost, even if it did rain for, for four and a half days this week. So here are the two images side by side, and to be honest, I don't know how well you can see them, given that this is just a 1080p video with uh, lots of YouTube compression, but here are the two images side by side, and you might be able to notice some subtle differences, which basically form the reasons that you might want to shoot this kind of scene with a longer focal length than you otherwise would if you just wanted to capture it in one frame. Uh, the first reason that you might want to do that is, uh, well, if I just zoom in here, as you can probably see, the uh, the one on the right, which is the 25mm file, is absolutely ginormous. I mean, it is 11295 by 12492 pixels, which works out at, just give me one minute, 141 megapixels. It's a big old file. Too big, to be honest. I mean, it's, my hard drive's gonna give up in a minute. But it's absolutely true that you can capture massive resolution by stitching images together with longer focal lengths than you obviously can with, uh, with just one image with the proper focal length. Having said that, my G9 has a high resolution mode, which uh, basically, if you don't know what that is, you sit the camera on a tripod and then the sensor will move ever so slightly between images and it'll stitch those images together and give you a really high resolution. So I think in this case, it's 80 megapixels. So I could in fact shoot this scene at eight millimeters and still get lots and lots of resolution. And in fact, all of the factors aside, I probably would choose to do that because uh, there's a lot less risk when you're asking the camera to come up with a high resolution file versus you trying to do it yourself. So when you're trying to do it yourself, you basically got to move the camera yourself and you're hoping really that there's enough information in all those files for Lightroom to be able to stitch the image together accurately. So basically when you're moving the camera around, you want to ensure that there's kind of 30%-ish overlap at least between each of the files so that Lightroom can see which images go where. But of course there's a couple of problems there. Sometimes there's human error, you don't quite get 30% and Lightroom doesn't stitch the images together all that well. Sometimes if you're not concentrating properly, you'll miss one of the images that you need. And that process of taking those different images takes a few seconds. So if you've got really fast moving clouds or maybe in this instance the sheep are moving then you're going to get a bit 
of a dodgy result. If you ask the camera to do it, it still takes a little bit of time, but much less time than trying to move the camera yourself. The second reason you might choose to shoot at a longer focal length with this kind of scene is depth of field. So when you shoot with an ultra wide angle lens like this, even if you shoot with it wide open, so this image with the eight millimeters was shot at f2.8, even when that's the case, you're gonna to struggle to get lots and lots of out of focus blur or bokeh. Now, if you look at the 25 mil image in comparison, there's lots and lots of out of focus blur in the foreground, which can look more appealing and uh, can draw the eye more towards the subject. Now, shooting with this 8 mil, if I wanted more out of focus blur in a scene like this, then it wouldn't be too much trouble to just try and introduce some of that blur in Photoshop with one of the blur tools. However, there are scenes where that would be an absolute nightmare. So if you had an image where in the foreground you had a, a girl with like lots of flowing hair and then the background had to be blurry, well, you'd struggle to do that in Photoshop without spending hours and hours on post-production. So in that kind of scene, Photoshop wouldn't really work and this technique well, this technique would. And reason number three you might choose to do this is distortion. So as you can probably see, you probably can't see actually given that this is a, a low res video, but the 25 mil tree looks a hell of a lot more natural to me given that I was there, it looks more like how I saw it than the eight mil tree. The eight mil tree looks a little bit stretched out and almost like it's falling backwards and that's just because of distortion. With the 25 mil, you get a lot less distortion than you do with an ultra wide angle focal length. And even though again in Photoshop, in some instances you can address distortion, you can't get a great result all the time and therefore it's safer in some instances to use a longer focal length and avoid distortion in camera. So yeah, there are three main reasons you might choose to do this and there are other ways to achieve all of the results from those three ways. But yeah, this is still a great technique to have in your toolkit because as I say, there are instances where this technique is just better than using software to try and replicate some of the results. So if you're interested in trying to replicate this yourself, there are a few things you need to be aware of. Obviously when you're stitching images together, uh, you need to make sure that the focus doesn't shift throughout the course of the photos. You just want one focal point for all of the photos. So in this instance, for example, I first take a photo of the tree and I focus on the tree. So going back to that video, of mine last week or the week before, yeah, the week before uh, where I was talking about back button focus, all I do in this photo is focus on the tree, take my thumb off the back button, and then for all the other images, I don't have to focus ever again. So that ensures that the only point of focus in any of those images is that tree. And the other thing to be aware of is that obviously you need to keep the exact same exposure throughout all of the photos. So I shoot in a fully manual mode, set the exposure I want for the first image, take that and then take all the other images, keeping the exact same exposure. And finally, the other thing to be aware of is if you're using particularly a prime, a really fast prime, sometimes when you shoot those lenses wide open, they can get quite soft in the corners and you can end up with some vignetting in the corners too. I would advise that you stop down by a couple of stops on these lenses to ensure that that doesn't happen. So as I say, these images were shot at f2.8, which means that you kind of take away any of the risk of things like vignettes, because obviously, again, you can remove those a lot of the time in post, but again, sometimes that can be tricky and it just means that it kind of ruins the stitch and it looks quite obvious if you've got even a little bit of vignetting between the images. And then when it comes to stitching them together in Lightroom, the process is a hell of a lot easier than it used to be. Basically, you just go up to photo, photo merge, panorama. And then there are three processing options. You get a preview of all of them. So just pick the one you think looks most natural, the one you like best. Yeah, and you're good to go, basically. That's uh, that's your stitch. So yeah, hopefully that was useful. It's quite a good technique. I use it quite a lot. It does have a name, and I'm blanking on the name, but basically somebody wrote a blog post about this technique and using it with portraits uh, quite a long time ago. If I find it, I'll link it in the description, but it's not my technique. This has been used by lots of people for a long, long time. And yeah, I really like it. Hopefully the weather is gonna pick up soon and I'll be able to go and do some videos outside because I'm aware I've only really done videos inside recently, which not good, I'm getting cabin fever. Although what has been good about the rain is I'm making real progress with the book. If you've been asking me about the book, it's coming soon, I promise. I just didn't quite realize how much effort it took to put a book together. Which to be honest, if you think about it for three seconds, you'd realize that it actually is. So yeah, it's coming, it's on its way and I'm very excited about it because it's looking good. But uh, yeah, that'll be along soon. Details in a couple of weeks. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm gonna go and review some more of those ideas that I came up with the other day. Probably just delete all of them.